I use these face wipes for my makeup. Oh. <laughs> no! I normally would go in with a cleanser, bad boys, and Ooh. I would do severe damage to myself. Oh, the shivers that just went up and down my spine. Hello everyone and welcome to Skincare with Hiram. If you don't know who I am, my name's Hiram and I'm passionate about teaching you how to perfect your skincare routine. So make sure you subscribe to my channel and hit the notification bell so you can see my videos every single week. The day has finally come. Billy freaking Irish finally revealed her skincare routine and I'm about to react to that shit because oh my gosh, I've been waiting for this day for so long. I, like pretty much everyone else, is a big Billy fan. And literally the second I saw this video go live yesterday, I was like, I... I'm morally obligated to react to the skincare routine. That's just the rules of God. I just have to react to it. And I know I haven't done a celebrity reaction video in a while, but it's time for me to come out of hibernation to watch this video. Hello, it's Billie Eilish. So let's get into it. If you don't know me, I've worked as a skincare specialist as well as formulating my own skincare products, but I am not a licensed esthetician or a dermatologist. That is not and has never been my role. I make these reaction videos to talk about skincare products, ingredients, and share my own personal opinion. But if you're struggling with anything in your own skin, please feel free to see an esthetician or dermatologist to get that shit treated. These are always just for fun and entertainment. So this video is posted by Vogue and it's called Billie Eilish's post-show beauty routine, which is a first. I've never seen a post-performance skincare routine before, so I'm so excited. Hello everyone. <laughs> she I looks so cute. Oh, you gotta love her. guys, my post-show nighttime bedtime beauty routine. Just got off stage, so let's do it. First step, this bad boy that hey, I got off okay. And I like to get that big ol' forehead fully <laughs> in frame because we don't want uh, to miss any inch of my forehead. And then all I do is tuck these little bad boys in. Her eyes are like captivating. I just, I can't get enough of them. They're so piercing blue. To remove this face that I did earlier for the show, I use these face wipes for my makeup. Oh. Like, <laughs> vegan. No! <laughs> oh my God, I was so optimistic for the beginning of this video. I, that was, oh. I already feel defeated, bro. Okay. <laughs> we are starting off strong with the makeup wipes. Okay, that that's the way that this video is gonna go. So I will give her the benefit of the doubt. She is using Josie Moran makeup wipes and Josie Moran does infuse good ingredients into their makeup wipes. But regardless, it is still a makeup wipe. How do I describe my relationship with makeup wipes? I am not the biggest fan of makeup wipes and by not the biggest fan, I mean, I kind of hate them primarily because of the waste that they create every single day. And most people will use multiple makeup wipes, especially if she's removing stage makeup because let me touch on that. Stage makeup is really intense as opposed to normal makeup, really intense. So I would imagine she's likely going to use multiple makeup wipes. Just with the waste that's created every day from makeup wipes, it's not the best for the environment. They're kind of like plastic bags for the earth, honestly. There are amazing substitutes to makeup wipes that are just as effective, if not more effective than makeup wipes, that work really well to remove all the makeup and mascara from your face without stripping your skin and without creating any daily waste. I personally recommend cleansing balms. They are the best experience for removing makeup in my opinion, because as you massage the oily cleansing balm into your skin, it really breaks up all that makeup and makes it perfect for rinsing off and washing afterwards. And in my experience, does a thousand times better at actually removing all of the makeup versus a makeup wipe. My top favorite one that I recommend to talk about all the time on my channel is the Then I Met You Living Cleansing Balm. Such a good one. It's like a mango smoothie for the face, deeply nourishing and hydrating to the skin. It leaves it all plump afterwards. Or if you want an affordable drugstore one, the Bliss Mighty Biome Cleansing Balm is also awesome. That one's similarly nourishing, but very cost effective as opposed to the Then I Met You one. But there's also other options like micellar water. If you use it with some reusable cotton rounds, that's a great option. I recommend the Bioderma Cleansing Water or even cleansing oils. There's just so many other options out there. If you do want to check out any of the products that I'm mentioning, I will have them all linked in the description box below. I make a small commission off of those links that help to support my channel. So if you do wanna try any of those products, I highly recommend checking them out, but no pressure as always whatsoever. I love Josie Moran and I love Billy, but I know that she is conscious about protecting the earth. And I think switching out to a different type of makeup remover will be much better for the environment and a much more enjoyable experience. I have had a skincare routine since I was like Ooh, Okay, she's Before being a little that, rough on the under eye area. Oh yeah, like that does look rough. <laughs> told me to care about it because he went through some really, really bad skin okay. years. And he was like four years older than me. And so he was like, dude, 
you better take care of your skin, man. <laughs> oh, I'm glad she that had that I influence. To, awesome. And I did. He basically showed me all of the stuff that I started using then, which was like just random oh, drugstore stuff that we didn't really know anything about. And then it uh, was mine. She's really being rough on the eye area, which is the most sensitive area of the face when it comes to makeup wipes and, you know, how much they can irritate the skin. Oh, yeah, a little bit rougher than what I would do if I were to use a makeup wipe. But I wouldn't. <laughs> it was my makeup guy recommended. Oh, so okay. Named Biba, and Biba is this facialist who also makes all of her own products. And cool. my skin had a complete like transformation when I started using. Oh, that's products. awesome! It's so insane. I'm so grateful for her. So now we are clean faced. Oh, thank God it's over. <laughs> um, on the road with me, I do my own hair and makeup, so that's part of my day. And this is the rest of my day. I don't have glam on tour. Um, on the oh. road with me, I do my own hair and makeup, so. That's part of my wow, day. that's super impressive. I love that. I have this mask, and it's just like a sulfur and zinc mask. Oh, and okay. Just... Right now, my skin hmm. is feeling really good because I am kind of allergic to gluten. And I'm not super concerned yet. We'll see how it works moving forward, but I noticed she didn't go in with a cleanser after using the makeup wipe, which makes me really concerned. She is going in with a face mask though, and even I have applied certain masks before I cleanse my skin, depending on how strong they are or how intense they are overall. So the alarm bells aren't going off yet, but I really do hope she goes in with a proper cleanser as opposed to a wipe. I have to do a skincare routine every single night. There's no... Yes! <laughs> I saw this post that was like, here's a scenario, like your, your loved one goes missing. <laughs> and they say that you're not gonna be able to find them all night and they're gonna search, but they have to like stop for the night. You have to go to sleep. We'll start again tomorrow. Do you do your skincare routine? <laughs> Hell yeah. Sometimes I'll do like my entire, every inch of my face. Sometimes I'll just do like a couple dots here and there. Okay. I love to see that, especially at her age, someone who's that dedicated to skincare. So important. I can only imagine the stress on the skin when you've been performing since the age that she has. So good job, Billy. The mask that she's using, she says it has sulfur and zinc, both of which are really amazing ingredients for the skin. Sulfur is great for drying out impurities from the pores and is awesome if you have more oily skin. And particularly in her case, if she's sweating a lot on stage with makeup on, that can create a hellhole of problems in your pores. So great ingredient to use as well as zinc, which has calming benefits. Good for anyone who has sensitive skin, but I do want to look at these ingredients. I've never heard of this brand Biba. I don't know if it's really popular. Oh, wait a second. I have heard of this brand. I know at one point I reacted to it in a celebrity skincare routine video. I just don't remember who. Okay, whew. Um, for a two ounce bottle of the mask, it is $59, so not cheap, not ridiculously expensive. And honestly, as a celebrity, you could do a lot worse, but not the most affordable product. I really wanna see these ingredients. Okay, as bentonite, which is great for also drying out impurities, can be a little bit drying on the skin though, as well as titanium dioxide. So this is definitely like a mineral heavy clay mask type. Okay, the ingredient list is really simple. It does have eucalyptus essential oil, witch hazel leaf extract, which I don't love. It does have a pretty small concentration of sulfur, but honestly, when it comes to sulfur, it doesn't need to be in high concentration for it to be effective. Do I love that this has essential oils in it? No, but considering it's a face mask and you rinse it off after like 15 minutes, I don't think it's too big of an issue so long as you aren't using it every day. The risk of irritation isn't really that big. Honestly, I think it's a pretty good ingredient list. For the price point, it's definitely luxury, so I don't know if I would pay that price point for this type of product. Mostly because I think for most people, clay masks aren't really necessary, but because Billy is performing and this is afterwards, I think it can be effective in helping her skin. I find my skincare routine to be incredibly rejuvenating. So for me, mm -hmm. I find a lot of like peace in it and it kind of like brings me back down to myself. I feel like a person when I do it, especially oh, after that. like a, a night of performing and having really high highs and yeah. a lot of adrenaline. It's kind of a lot for a person. Mm -hmm. I really look forward to my skincare routine to be honest with you, I really <laughs> do. I love that. That's something I haven't even thought of. I can only imagine like how much adrenaline you're having when you're performing high emotions and drained and everything under the sun you must be after performing. And I feel like a skincare routine is a really good way to wind down. That's honestly one of the main reasons I love skincare. It's such a meditative and calming experience. And I think really just good for the mental health, especially in her situation. After that, is off I normally would go in with a cleanser bad boys and I would <gasps> do severe damage to myself I, I usually find myself standing here like digging into my face for hours and hours but um I feel pretty uh, good right now I don't feel like I need to do that at this exact usually oh my 
like, oh my God, I have goosebumps. Oh, the shivers that just went up and down my spine. <laughs> Let me just calm down real quick before I address this because bro, I'm freaking out. Bro, I'm so fucking dramatic. If you are not properly trained like an esthetician or a dermatologist to do extractions, those tools can be actual hell on your skin. Absolutely horrific. And let me tell you why. I, two times, used those to extract some of my pores on my nose that I noticed were very oily, sebum-y. And this was after I had already started getting into skincare. So I was like, I'm gonna be really gentle because I know this can be really intense on the skin. I went in and did extractions. My nose got severely red, very, very, very red. And then afterwards, I noticed a few little things on my nose, which were broken capillaries. And if you don't know what that is, I will show it here. It's basically severe damage to the pore. That fun fact does not go away unless you get really expensive corrective treatments done. And to this day, I still have damage from those two times that I extracted my pores on my nose. It fucked up my skin. And the worst part is that that's not just me. I have talked to so many people about this. I was literally just talking about this with Brad Mondo earlier today. It can be disastrous on the skin if you aren't properly trained on how to use them. Now she does have a facialist, which is good, but when it comes to extractions overall, the potential for really fucking up your skin is so high that honestly, I believe that you should only get it done by someone who is licensed to do it. And I think my main concern with this is that she says she usually goes in and does that, as in she's doing it regularly regularly to her skin. Mm. My heart is screaming for her skin. <laughs> I don't know if that's a good idea, bro. Now, if you're watching, you're like, Hiram, well, how else are you supposed to get oil and sebum and all the buildup out of your pores? That's where exfoliants come in, like salicylic acid, mandelic acid, glycolic acid. Those are all amazing ingredients for dissolving all the impurities on top of and inside your pore to help clear it out, prevent your skin from getting more oily and creating more buildup in your pores, all in a very gentle, safe, and effective way. In my opinion, salicylic acid is the best ingredient for really getting deep in that pore and pushing everything out. I love the Paul's Choice 2% BHA exfoliating solution. That one's like the most powerful one out there. Or if you want a daily one, the Selfless by Hiram salicylic acid and sea kelp pore clearing and oil control serum is a great one just to make sure that you have that daily application of salicylic acid to prevent that issue. Anything would be better than that. I'm so sorry. I feel like I'm roasting Billy. I promise I'm not. As I'm watching this, I can only imagine how badly she's being roasted in the Vogue comment section. I know people are freaking out right now. And I thought it wasn't gonna get worse than the makeup wipes. Woo, okay, here we go. Let's move on. <laughs> I'm gonna use some cleanser and I use- Okay, yeah, she's using a cleanser. Gel. I will use about- Okay, I don't know that cleanser. This much-ish. Okay, very little amount. Nice, I that's a nice foaming cleanser. I wash my face so violently. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. I honestly kind of do the same thing too. Why are you so rough with your face? <laughs> I used to be like, like a dude. I've seen men wash their fucking faces. They go like. It's so true. I am guilty of that. I will be honest. For some reason, I don't consider myself a man who has a considerably large amount of testosterone. But when I put a cleanser on my face, for some reason, all of the aggression just comes out and I go to war on my face and it's a super violent process. I don't know why. But let me look at this cleanser. I'm really interested to see what she uses. Oh, okay. So this is their gentle alpha hydroxy acid cleanser. So there you go. She is using some alpha hydroxy acids, which are great for, you know, dealing with those pore buildup and dead skin cell problems she's experiencing. And it uses mandelic acid. That is one of my favorites. I mean, I literally use mandelic acid in one of my products. The cleanser's on sale right now for $32, which isn't a terrible price point. Still a little bit luxury, but not terrible. Ooh, okay. So it does have a cleansing agent. I don't love sodium C14 through 16 olefin and sulfonate that can be a little bit stripping on the skin. Oh, it has green tea extract. I love green tea in a cleanser. I mean, I literally put it in my own cleanser. <laughs> I feel like there's a good amount of similarities between Biba and Selfless. Interesting. You know, overall, this isn't a terrible cleanser. I don't love the stripping agent that they use. However, considering she did use a makeup wipe, which probably didn't remove all of the makeup on her skin, something as strong as that may actually work to remove some of that excess makeup left over on her skin. So, it could be a unique win-win situation. We rinse. Cold water. Don't use warm water. Don't use hot water. Use cold water. Hmm. I'm not sure why she says that. I don't know of any research or data out there that shows that using cold water is any better than warm water or hot water. Obviously you don't wanna expose your face to hot water. Like that's just not good for your skin at all. It can dehydrate it as well as irritate it. But I personally use warm water just for the sake of comfort. There is a myth out there that like cold water will close your pores and make your skin look better, which is not really true. If anything, it'll just refresh your skin and may help a little bit with puffiness. But from what I know, there's no hardline data or research out there showing that cold water is any better than warm water. I use these little face wipe pads 
Mm -hmm. um, I don't use the disposable ones. I these were made by a friend of ours. Hey, yeah, I love that they're not disposable. Away. Just like cut little circles out of it. I have so many of these. <laughs> so many. And then you just throw them all in a bag when you've used them after like I love week. that. Throw them in the washer. See, that's what you should be using for your makeup oh, remover. Good I love that. To go. I take this toner. Okay. That, like about that much. You don't need much. So fun hack, a lot of people think that in order to use a toner, you should use like a cotton pad, even a reusable cotton pad, something like that to apply it. I'm gonna let you in on a secret. You don't need to use that. You can literally just put some of the toner in your hand, pat it together and apply into the skin. And the great part is that you're gonna get a lot more use out of your product because the cotton round isn't soaking up like half of the product you're trying to use and then just throwing it away afterwards. You'll actually get a lot more bang for your buck just by applying it in your hands and applying it to your face. I don't know who made up the rule that you need to use a cotton pad to apply your toner, but your products will go a lot further if you don't use it, so just use your hands. And then I take this daily moisturizer, oh, okay. which is amazing. You can use this throughout the day whenever you would like. And I take like two pumps-ish. I don't know that moisturizer. I'm not familiar with it. Let's take a look at the ingredients. Okay, so it looks like it's their daily moisturizer. It's $55, so Definitely a little bit more expensive, but then again, I do have some moisturizers I like that are like $50. Ooh, so this ingredient list looks interesting. One of the top ingredients is squalane, which is an incredible oil that works to make sure your skin is properly hydrated and nourished. It prevents water loss, amazing. It has glycerin, caprylic triglyceride. Ooh, it has Norwegian spruce extract, which I don't see very often. I think it's an antioxidant. Okay, so it does have grapefruit peel oil and orange peel oil, both of which are citrus essential oils, which are the most irritating of all essential oils. Oils. I don't love that, especially because this is a moisturizer that you're leaving on your skin throughout the entire day. Citrus essential oils, when exposed to UV light, so when you're out in the sun, can degrade really easily and cause irritation, sensitivity, redness. But the good thing about this product is that it does have good moisturizing agents. Honestly, if you're someone who has sensitive skin or more prone to irritation, or you're like me, you just don't like essential oils, I wouldn't recommend this product. Overall though, it's a pretty simple ingredient list. And the good news is that there's plenty of other really simple ingredient list moisturizers on the market that are available for a good price point. Personally, would I buy this product? No, just because of those essential oils. But I am glad to see that she is moisturizing her skin because it definitely needs it after all that she puts it through in a day. The thing that has, again, changed my life from Biba, this is her cream barrier. I oh, love this stuff. It's really like a nighttime moisturizer, but I use it all the time. I actually use this before I put my makeup on. I like to oh, really okay. I'll take like that much. Oh wow, she uses a lot. Much. Interesting, okay. So she goes in with two moisturizers. Very interesting. That one's more of a rich formula, a rich consistency. Personally, I don't see a problem using two moisturizers. Like if you want to do that, you're more than welcome to. I will say I'm glad she definitely goes in a lot with the moisture overnight because that's when your skin needs the most amount of moisture to prevent it from losing water as you sleep and prevent a lot of long-term problems as well. And even saying that, I sometimes do use two moisturizers as well because I have dry cheeks and an oily T-zone. So it could be the same thing with her. And then after my daily moisturizer and my cream barrier, I will use this hydrating toner, which I don't know oh, what you're supposed to do after this, after but moisturizer. I just love being moisturized. Like, hmm. I want to look like somebody just dipped me <laughs> in honey. That's good, that's good. Man, I, I don't think I've ever seen someone who's used a toner after a moisturizer. I personally don't necessarily see an issue with that, but I also wouldn't recommend, first off, using two toners. I feel like that's kind of getting into just using a lot of products on your skin. It takes more time, it's more money, but who knows, she's probably getting these products for free, so whatever ones she wants to use, I guess the better. But here's why I wouldn't recommend using a toner after a moisturizer. It's because toners are water-based, which means they're very bioavailable. They sink into the skin very quickly. They're meant to be applied to your skin like right after you use a cleanser. A moisturizer has emollients, which are agents in it that give it that slip nice greasy creamy feeling and emollients and moisturizers are used as a protective barrier on the skin to make sure that it's keeping all the water and hydration in your skin and preventing any water from escaping so if you use a water-based toner after applying a moisturizer it's really not going to be absorbed very well by the skin yes your skin still will absorb some of it but it's just not going to be as effective as if you apply it before a moisturizer so maybe it is her preference to apply it afterwards but if she's wanting to get the most out of her product, I would recommend it before, not after applying a moisturizer. Taking care of your skin is, is so, so important as just a person and it's, 
it's kind of looked at as this like, oh, girls do that, but it's not true. Skincare is yes. so much more than that, and it is it, there is no gender to it. And yes, there are Kelly. so many people that don't know much about taking care of your skin, and it's so important. It's so important, and it, like it helps you. I feel like it helps me mentally. I feel so much better when I feel good about my skin. Yes, ah, oh, I love that I she said that. It. We stand. She's a queen. As soon as my face routine is done, I take. The hey, ones, nice. Is, uh, Classic. Aquaphor healing ointment, <laughs> which I have with me at all times, 24 7. Same here. It doesn't matter where I am, it doesn't matter who I'm with, it doesn't matter what I'm doing. I have this in my pocket. And I, I love have six that. more in my bag, always. This is my like, gloss. I don't use anything else. Cool. If I do nice. use on top of this, <laughs> and it's just for like a shine. I'm really not a big fan of lip glosses because mm. they are sticky and then they taste weird. Yeah, yeah, I kind of And agree. they get in my throat <laughs> and I can't sing very well when my when there's a weird taste in my throat. Oh, so yeah, I, I didn't even think about that. I have to sing. Honestly, we love Aquaphor. Good, simple, super affordable. I think Aquaphor, if it works for you on your lips, it's a great option. I will admit, like, I do carry Aquaphor around with me. It's usually in my bag. It's not the most effective thing on my lips, but I will admit I have the most dry lips on the planet. It is unreal how dry they are. I'm constantly constantly having to reapply lip balm, even if I'm applying so much moisturizer underneath and using multiple lip balms and trying a bunch of different formulas, they are just always dry. And it's kind of become a little bit of an insecurity because people have bullied me online for my dry lips, but you know, it is what it is. I wish Aquaphor worked as well for me as it does for her, but honestly, it's a great formula. Lip balms overall are very simple formulas. So if you are seeing positive benefits from using something like Aquaphor, I'd say go for it. One of the most affordable skincare products out there. Eilish. And I do like That's to put such a, a beautiful spritz bottle. of fragrance on before I go to sleep, just to have like really, really, really a small amount, but just to have kind of an aura. Interesting, huh? I've never heard of that. But get that product placement in, girl. <laughs> if I know that I'm gonna sleep somewhere else, I will literally pack an entire bag and it's filled with all of what I just showed you. I really enjoy it. It makes me feel really good and, and oh, happy awesome. and like very, cozy and good you know if i if i'm missing any of this stuff i really feel bad i just don't feel <laughs> good this was my post-show bedtime routine awesome I she's so freaking cute i love her so much i've never seen someone spray fragrance on them before they go to bed but pro tip if you use a fragrance especially a luxury fragrance don't rub it on your wrist like this rubbing the fragrance actually burns through the top and middle notes just leaving the base note meaning your fragrance is going to last a lot shorter than it could if you just left it alone so don't rub it just spray it and leave it there oh <laughs> wow me providing fragrance advice on a skincare channel did not think that was going to happen all right so what do i think of this routine <laughs> the part I'm scared for. I would say I'm like half feeling bad about it, half feeling good. I think the products that she used are fine. They do what they're supposed to do. They're simple ingredient lists. Are they my favorite ingredient list or do I agree with all of the ingredients in them? No, not necessarily, but overall they're just simple, good, and they're not ridiculously expensive. So I do appreciate that. I just can't get over the pore extractors. Um, I just really, like I said before, I really don't think that's a good idea to do on your skin alone. Because she has a facialist, that's definitely something that he or she should be doing and not her on her own. I get it, she's on tour, she's traveling, she's busy. She doesn't have access to that all the time, but it'd be much better just to use a good exfoliating product that helps to prevent that pore buildup every single day rather than going in with those harsh tools and potentially damaging her skin. But yeah, I think that kind of sums up all my thoughts. I just wanna say, Billy, we love you so much. I'm such a huge fan. I think what you're doing is awesome and you're bringing so much light and inspiration to the world. Keep shining bright. I think you're an amazing human. And for anyone who's watching, what do you guys think of this routine? Please comment down below and don't be disrespectful. I know we have our skincare opinions, but that's no excuse to drag her. Constructive thoughts only. If you do want to check out any of the products that I talked about in today's video, they're all listed in the description box down below. And honestly, you guys, I don't know if I'm going to be doing another celebrity reaction video soon. I feel like for me, I was doing so many of them for so long, but they all kind of started to get repetitive. But if there's one positive thing I will say about Billie Eilish's skincare routine, Definitely not like any other routine I've seen so far. Let me know, of course, if you guys do want to see more celebrity skincare reactions. Be sure to check out my podcast, Just Position, where I talk with some of your guys' favorite creators about mental health, vulnerability, life experiences. I'll have it linked down below so you guys can go watch and stream wherever you listen to your podcasts. And if you guys haven't already, be sure to subscribe to my channel and to the notification bell so that you can see my videos every single week. And I will see you guys in the next one. Mwah.